In lecture 3 we explore functions of one variable. In the first module we'll have an overview of functions, we'll look at the domain and range of functions, and then consider how we can graph functions. Earlier we considered equations and saw how they represent the relationship between variables. How are functions different? Let's look at a formal definition. A function is a rule that changes or transforms a variable into another value. Here we use the word rule in a fairly general way. The type of rule we'll come across is mainly in the form of an algebraic expression. Functions are valid for certain values of the variable. That's the domain of the function. The interval of values that result is the range of the function. An important point is that each value of the variable results in only one value of the function. That is, it's a unique mapping. Let's look at the notation for a function of one variable. We often write our function in this form. And we say that y equals f of x. Sometimes uh, we just have f of x is equal to an algebraic expression. In this case, x is the argument of the function. That's the independent or exogenous variable. And y would be the dependent or endogenous variable. Our domain is all the values that x can take. And the range is the resulting unique values of y. This property that each value of x has a unique y gives us the vertical line test for a function. So on the left, we can draw a vertical line through any point, and we have just one value of y, or f of x. But where a vertical line cuts the graph in two places, such as on the right, it's definitely not a function. We would have an equation to the curve, but that equation is not a function. Here we have two examples that illustrate the domain of a function. An important characteristic of a function, as we'll see later, is whether it's increasing or decreasing. So here we have some formal definitions. If x1 is less than x2, and f of x1 is less than or equal to f of x2, then our function is increasing. In the case where x1 is less than x2, and f of x1 is strictly less than f of x2, then we have a strictly increasing function. Corresponding definitions apply for decreasing and strictly decreasing functions. You should be familiar with the graphs of various types of functions, including these. So we've got linear functions, quadratic functions, hyperbolic functions, and cubic functions. We'll look at these in more detail in the following modules using Excel examples. What we'd be interested in are the intercepts, so where the functions cut the x and y axis, the roots, the values of x when f of x is equal to 0, the asymptotes, where x approaches minus infinity or plus infinity, and the maximum and minimum values of our function. We'll spend quite a bit of time finding these in the coming weeks. Here we have some graphs of important functions. We'll examine these functions in more detail later. Make sure you look at these functions in the Excel spreadsheet for this lecture. When we graph a function of one variable, we use the Cartesian coordinate system in what's known as the xy plane. We have the horizontal axis, where we usually have the values of x or our independent variable, and the vertical axis for the values of y or f of x. The xy plane is divided into four quadrants, numbered like this. And we specify individual points on the xy plane as ordered pairs. First the x value, then the y value. For example, we might have point A, 4, 2. This is our x value, and this is our y value. To find that point, we go vertically from 4 on the horizontal axis, then horizontally from 2 on the vertical axis, and there we have A. So the numbers 4, 2, that ordered pair, are the coordinates for point A. We graph a function by taking the x values over the domain and calculating the corresponding values of y. These points are the coordinates on the xy plane. For example, we might have a simple function, y equals a half x plus 1. We take the values of x we want to plot, work out the corresponding values of y. There are ordered pairs we want to plot. We find those pairs and then join them up. And it's the graph of the function. Very simple in a linear case. 
The choice of scales on the axis can affect the way you interpret graphs. This is something we should be conscious of. For example, these two graphs present the same information. The graph on the left gives the impression that the change in per capita expenditure is large. We see the scale on our vertical axis starts at 5,500 euros and goes up to 7,250 euros. So on this graph, the values of per capita expenditure are quite spread out. The graph on the right hand side gives the opposite impression that the change in per capita income is quite small. This is because we start at zero and go up to 8,000. So the scale on the vertical axis is quite large compared to the range of our function. 